Okay, so this is the reading section of the uh, SAT. I haven't uh, looked at this section yet, uh, but I'm noticing it has a nice, very big map on it. So this tells me that it's going to be much more similar to the actually the science section of the ACT. And the point of that test was to see how you could read and understand, you know, just data in general. So this this is going to be a, a comprehension test. But it's not just like a comprehension test of can you read the words. It's also going to be can you more focus on what what's going on. Uh, I'm just looking at the uh, the questions now. I'll show them in more detail. But um, there's a certain question that I notice isn't on here. On the old SAT, it would it would ask you what's the author's purpose in doing this, and it would like have like it's to explain and elucidate. It's to contrast and contemplate it's to reminisce and something else basically though they would throw at you like two sort of vague words that sometimes that match sometimes don't and you try to figure out what exactly it is and there's always one choice that really works for all of them that each each of the four choices has one thing that always works and one of them is a bit iffy and that was always a terrible question i always hated those questions and I noticed they've gotten rid of these. So this looks like it's more straightforward. So the, the way to do these is, because you want to be timed, is we look at the, don't don't start, don't think you can read, don't think you should read the whole thing, all the, all the different strategies. But my strategy is I never read the thing in one go. What I first do is I look at all the questions that I don't really need to understand what's going on. Just I only need to like read the single word. In a, in a sentence, and maybe like the line above it, the line below it, and I can pretty much figure out what the word means. So, the ones that say in line such and such, what's the point of all this? Uh, and then, then we also have some questions which are more like content wise. So, I'm going to focus on the, 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 uh, the line ones. In line 18, what does the word collusion mean? Uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, conspiracy impact separation or danger. Okay, line 18. Let's see. It's a long sentence. But these nations were forcibly abducted with the collusion of the world's most heinous fascist regime. Okay, so I happen to know about a bit, a bit about history for all of you who are just walking in late. Uh, in World War II, the Russians and the Germans decided at the very beginning of the war they wouldn't invade each other. They just invade Poland together and they'd split it. So, uh, collusion of the world's most heinous fascist regime. That's I happen to know that's the Nazis. Uh, so that means that Russia and that means let's see, Russia and Germany are like colluding together. They're working together to do this some horrible thing. I don't know it's about music or something like that. I haven't read it yet. Okay, let's see. Let's see. It looks like conspiracy when you collude together. And you do that. Now, now, sometimes you can just know what the word means, and usually that would match. But sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes words have two meanings. So that one's A. Let's see. Uh, let me do another. Let's see. Another. Uh, what does the word mean? Line 66. The word burden. Uh, let's see, by the 1980s, the nation was simmering. Younger students were already defying so authority and speeches and laid, laid history bare under the cover of Gorbachev's policy of glasnost or free speech. And the burden of protest songs had passed to rock and roll as young men. So, a good way to do these things is before you look at the choices, see if you can figure out another word you can replace this with uh, and it wouldn't change the meaning, like a simple, like a simple word. Let's see, I, I, would, so I would say responsibility. So I'm going to go check to see if there's any word in the choice that looks like the word, the word responsibility. So it looks like the respons it's the responsibility of the young men to do these process songs now. Okay, 64. All right, and look, here we are. Responsibility is a choice. So that, that's the right answer. Okay, let's see. Okay, lines 33 to 36, there's a distinction between something about Estonia. So let's see 
uh, what that is. Okay, so Estonia, that's right over there. Let's see, lines 33 or 36. Estonia has always been a nation of singers, its wealth of folk singers gave rhythm to village life and work, and its earnest anthems often invoke the longing for self-determination. Estonians had lived for centuries in servitude, and the themes of their music were often grim. Uh, very grim, and there's always hope in their hearts. Okay, so where's the contrast? There's a contrast going along here. Um, and it, the contrast is that, that servitude and sadness, but always hope. Okay, so let's see. Uh, okay, let's see. So, although the whole thing in general is about, like, Russia and Soviets and everything and all that, I wouldn't say it's C or D. I would not say it's these. Because I, I see... I see there's no, there's no internal contrast mentioned anywhere about Latvia, Lithuania, and the Soviet Union. So it's certainly not C and D. So, you now we're, we're looking for distinction. So we have the tone of the Estonian songs and the people's true feelings. That's the thing on one hand. The themes of Estonian folk songs and anthems. So here's the distinction between these two choices. Both of these choices describe what our, our three lines are about. The three lines are about the themes of the folk songs and anthems. But it's not like it's saying, oh, the folk songs, they're different from the anthems. And it's... So... It's it's not really B. I don't think it's B. Now here, A, the tone of the songs and the people's true feelings. So I think that's the better choice because... The tone of the songs, it's all about the songs are all about the, theme, the songs are all about grim and sorrow and slavery, but in the hearts of their peop the people what the people believe there's always hope. So I think the answer is going to be A between the mor the morose, sad, dirgeful songs and the people's true feelings, hope. So I'm going to say A. Okay, so I'm, I'm skipping around a bit, I know. But this one, this question was just different from the other questions. So, what's the follow? Which of the following claims is supported by the diagram? This, uh, I guess, the diagram. The whole point of the diagram really was to uh, just do basically this one question. There's really nothing else that really needs the diagram so far. So, uh, what's supported by the diagram? Let's see. In 1939, Germany gained the entirety of Poland. We know Germany didn't get the entirety of Poland because look, this bit of here, that's part of Poland that so that's you that Soviets got so it's not it's not that one Soviet Union doubled in size after the pact no this is what Soviet acquired and this is what they show of the Soviet Union but if the map was full size Soviet Union would like end over there so that's not true it, Lithuania and Estonia are contiguous countries that means that they're together and Estonia and Latvia is not contiguous with Lithuania. Uh, Estonia and Lithuania is not contiguous because Latvia is in the way. Not that one. And the Soviet Union is getting strict from the Baltic Sea to the Black Sea. So here's the Baltic Sea, here's the Black Sea, and all they gained is all that. So that's the answer. Okay. The author indicates the statistics about the size of the song stage in Tallinn. Lines 47 to 49 for what purpose? Okay, so let's see. In Tallinn, the, the master's modern stage held some 30,000 singers and the many in the outdoor amphitheater could accommodate as many as 200,000 people. Often 30% of all Estonians would be there. Okay. Then, uh, then it goes on to say that during the Soviet years, the festival was about communism, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So... Why is the author mentioning how big the stage is? Okay, so how big could he tell you how big the amphitheater is? It could be. Indicate the popularity of the tributes to Stalin and Lenin. Compare the size of similar to similar stage in Latvia and Lithuania. Illustrate the wide appeal to the mass song festivals in Lithuania. Okay, so it's certainly not C, because we don't we don't talk about Lithuania 
I mean, we only mention like Lithuania like once over here, just to mention that it, they, it was also conquered in one go. But it, it, Lithuania, just do a quick scan. Lithuania is not important in this whole thing. It's just an interesting factoid. Lithuania is not important. Okay. They make it the popularity of tributes to Stalin and Lenin. So, um, it could be, it could be that the people generally love, uh, love Stalin and Lenin. Um, I doubt it. Also, if we read beyond, it'll, it'll say that uh, these mandatory performances that the people had to go, the Estonians would try to sneak in some music, uh, but that was obviously not really allowed. So it sounds like they'd rather listen to their own music and don't really care about Stalin and Lenin. So I'd say, uh, no, I don't really like Stalin and Lenin. Okay. So the illustrate the wide appeal mass song festivals or just to show how large the amphitheater is. So basically, this is a throwaway stupid answer. If there's really no other, if this isn't any good, then this will be the answer because it certainly does illustrate how big the amphitheater is but uh it's not like a i wouldn't say it's a it's a hugely important and essential point in it's not really that essential to understand lithuanian music about how big the stage is i mean it, it could be but it, but let, let's see if we can find because if this if this one is true i think it'll be a better answer it'd be more relevant to the whole point of this thing so far which I only know so far from reading the choice. I haven't actually read the essay um, yet. Um, that Estonians are like really all about music. They're really about the rock and roll. So one of our good ideas to read below, but also a good idea is to read above. So let's read above. Early in the National Awakening, about 140 years ago, Estonians established a history of mass song festivals held when money and politics allowed, celebrations that would kindle and fortify the courage to express the love of language in their nation. Excellent. And they're re reluctant, to be absorbed, reluctant to be absorbed by anyone. Okay. So look, 140 years ago. So, World War II and the Soviets, that was like 70 years ago, 80 years ago. Um, that's, more, that's not 140 years ago. So bef way before the war, way before the war, uh, the Estonians were all about music. Um, so, I think now we have stronger evidence to support D. Because uh, we just said that the Estonians have been all about the music for 140 years. And and uh, now 30% of all the Estonians are going to a single festival on a single day. I mean, like, not even North Korea can do that. Like, 30% of everyone stops what they're doing and goes to a festival. Um, so I think I think D is is a much stronger answer. So I'm going to choose that. Okay. The primary rhetorical effect of the last sentence of the passage is to do one of these things. We got somewhat. All right. So let's, so let's look at the last end of the passage. This was the heart of the singing revolution, a spontaneous, non-violent but powerful political movement that united Estonians with poetry and music. After that, there was no backing up. Sedition hung in the wind, waiting to be denied. So I have not actually read the rest of the passage yet, but it's always a good strategy is to say what you think it means, and then we're going to look re read a bit higher up, and then we're going to see if we still believe that same thing. And then once we're once those two things match, then we're going to look at the choices. So sedition hung in the wind, waiting to be denied. So I happen to know a bit. About the Soviet Union, it's a horrible place. If you're still living there, it sucks for you. Um, and they don't allow freedom of speech and any of that, and they don't really allow any nationalism aside for like Soviet general Soviet nationalism. So it sounds to me like the Estonians started like singing their old folk songs again, and um, no one really stopped them. And um, sedition, that's their sort of like being naughty in the eyes of the Soviets was around, was going around waiting to be denied. So what's going to happen is it, are the Soviets going to come and deny it or are they going to 
but I mean, I'm preventing them from singing their folk songs, or are they going to just collapse, which they really did, and just Estonia is basically independent. So let's look at the choices. I said, uh, let's look at the choices. Okay. Convey the sense of dread that hung over Estonia at the height of the singing revolution. So that could be it. They're seeing, they've started singing this, uh, all the folk songs. What's going to happen? Is a KGB going to crack down on them? Maybe it's that one. Indicate the depth of disagreement between violent and non-violent revolutionaries. So there's there's nothing really about revolutionaries and violent. There's not really thinking about anything about violence in here. Um, so I, I would say not that one. Let's see. Uh, show how crucial Mujik and Poti were to, were to Estonia's fight for independence. Um, that could be, in general, what the thing is the whole the whole essay is about, but. This this particular last sentence doesn't really doesn't really scream that for me, so I don't really like that. Um, I don't really like that answer. And this is it's it's a bit subjective, but if is this but first of all, go through it and see if any of them jump out at you. But so these two don't jump out at me, so I'm going to downvote them. Communicate the sense of optimistic tension that Estonians felt after the night song festival. So that could be it also. There's They've started seeing all these songs. Uh oh, what's going to happen? Maybe, maybe I think maybe we'll win. I mean, maybe we won't. What what's going to happen? I don't know. Um, but both A and and D are are very similar. So they started singing all these folk songs. What's going to happen? Is it like utter dread? Like oh no, we can see, and the Russians are coming. The Russians are coming, or you know, we're a bit concerned. That something bad's going to happen, but we're still very optimistic. So, it looks like this sentence is sort of going up optimistic, because it's it's like it's sort of like in praise of the. First of all, it's probably I know it's optimistic. Here's a good reason to know it's optimistic because if we can see, it was this thing was written in two thousand eight, so that's well after Soviet Union fell. So the person writing this knows that. Uh, that the Estonians won in the end, so they, the person writing this, I don't think that there's going to there's going to be any dread because we know we know in hindsight that nothing really happened. But let's look at the previous paragraph just to be sure. So, okay, so there was a rock concert and it was went on for six nights, and people got out their flags, which were forbidden because you're only allowed to have the Soviet flag. But they got out their old Estonian flags, and no one stopped them. And uh, two th- two hundred thousand people were there, and so it sounds it sounds pretty positive. That basically, the end of after like you know fifty years, sixty years of occupation by the Soviets, the Estonians are now free. So it looks like it's really optimistic. So I'm going to say definitely, definitely it's going to say D, but it was close. It it could have easily, depending on what was above it, it could have it could have easily been been A. Uh, 